Hey everyone, Paul Wilson here. I just tried to start live streaming to you folks and within less than two minutes, I already had problems. Uh, I think I'm probably gonna give up on the whole live streaming thing. Uh, just It's just not working for me anymore and I don't entirely understand why. Um, I've certainly, I, right now I have the fastest internet connection both up and down that I've ever had, uh, you know, at my current address or my past address, but it just seems I can't get live streaming uh, to work for me. Maybe I'll look at different platforms for this. I'm not sure, but I do want to fulfill the promise of uh, recording this session today and making it available to all of you. Um, I noticed, um, just to kind of reiterate what the purpose of this live stream is, I noticed that there was a lengthy thread on the user forums. Uh, someone was trying to build a custom question slide. It's going to be a multiple choice with multiple answers. And, uh, you know, it was going to use variables and advanced actions. And uh, most importantly, something I've not covered before is there's only going to be a finite number of tries in order for that to work. So I'm going to live build this solution. I've done a little bit of the pre-work here. Let me go ahead and uh, and share my desktop here. Let's do that so you can see the project that I've already started here. So again, the concept is multiple correct answers with three tries. Um, so I've, I've kind of set up the slide already. We've got our question stem up here. It's just a text caption and I've created some smart shape buttons. Um, with, uh, in this case, six possible answers. The first one and the last one are distractors. All the other ones are actually correct uh, answers here. I've built a feedback caption, which is just a transparent shape here, but it's a multi-state object. So let's go and first of all, take a look at what the states are for that particular item. So we have a correct state. So here's the message that will be displayed when the user or the learner gets this correct we have an incorrect state and this is um, specifically incorrect but you still have tries remaining this third option is that's incorrect and also you are out of tries you'll not receive any points for this question and then press the next button to proceed and uh, much like with our regular question slides uh, you must make a selection before sub, uh, pressing submit. And I don't think I'll count this as, um, I don't think I'll count this as part of, um, you know, the number of tries. So we'll, we'll see if we can build that in as well. Again, I, I haven't fully formed this solution. This I'm literally building on the fly here. So that's the other thing. All of these buttons, by the way, are simply called button one, button two, button three, button four, button five, button six. And this is feedback. You can see that in the, the label section there. Uh, and also we have submit down here at the bottom. Again, these are just shapes used as buttons. I haven't applied any action to them yet. So they just presently have the go to next slide action. And then I've got two different next buttons. And I'll explain that later. These next buttons by default will not be visible on output. So you won't see those. There's the other one there. And I think we're good to go. Let me first of all show you the variables I've created because you can't really do much with advanced actions uh, without some variables. So I have this first variable called underscore attempt. This is simply going to keep track of those number of tries and you know I've decided to use three tries but it would be just as simple to make it four tries or two tries or whatever you wish and I also have a variable for button one through six here to keep track of what's been selected there so I can go ahead and close the variables window the first advanced action we need to write is the button selection advanced action and there's an opportunity here to use shared actions. And I'll show you that in just a moment here. Uh, let's go into the project drop down menu and select advanced action. And um, for now, I'm going to call this button 01. 
And uh, in this case here, we're going to make it a conditional advanced action. So we're going to say if the variable associated with button one is equal to the literal value of zero, we are going to assign button one with a literal value of one. And in the else section, we're going to assign button one with the literal value of zero. So essentially, every time you press this, it will alternate the value of underscore button one from zero to one and then back to zero again, then back to one, essentially keeping track of whether it's selected or not. Now, in the case of it being set up to be selected, we want to change its appearance. With these shapes used as buttons, let me go ahead and save this as an action temporarily. And go back out to my Captivate Canvas here. Button one, you'll see if I go into State View, and I do this when I have a selected state. I first of all delete the rollover and down states because I find they interfere in uh, communicating to your learner, uh, you know, what what's actually working here, what's happening, and so on here. And what I have instead is a selected state. So when you click on it, when it's selected, it will turn blue and the lettering will change from black to white there. So that's fine. Uh, let me exit the state here. And what we're going to do is go back to our advanced action. And we're going to take care of changing the appearance of the button depending on whether the item is selected or not. So it's obvious to us that it is. So I'm going to change the state of button one to selected. And then down here in the else, when it goes back to zero, we're going to change the state of button one back, oops, back to normal is what I meant to select there. So I can update this action, click OK. That's all you need to do for a selection button. It just will toggle on and off, much like a radio button or a checkbox would do. But in this case here, I don't want to write six copies of this advanced action. Instead, what I want to do is save this as a shared action. And we'll call this button selection. And we just want to put a parameter description for each of the parameter items that you see over here. Think of a shared action as an advanced action that is a fill in the blank. So button one, so I'll just simply call this what it is. Uh, this is the button being pressed. This is the selected state of that button. And this is the normal state of that button. Okay, now we do need to specify which variable we're going to be using because it's going to be different for the other five buttons. So we want to change this to something that could be variable in this case here, no pun intended. And variable associated, make sure you spell that right, with button. It doesn't matter. No one's going to see these things besides you. So I can save this as a shared action, close the original advanced action. And by the way, the reason I keep the original advanced action. Some people say, oh, you don't have to save the original advanced action. If I determine that I need this, this shared action to do more, I can go back to the original advanced action and make whatever change I need to that and save that rather than having to write it from scratch each time. So now what I can do is I can choose Backdoor Alberta, which is not a real place. And uh, I'm going to change that to Execute Shared Action. There it automatically chooses 
my only shared action I've created for this project so far. And I just need to click on the action parameters. And we'll choose button 01, button 01, selected, and normal, and then hit save. We'll do the same thing for this one here. Execute shared actions. And this will be for button two. So we choose the variable for button two, the actual button two, the selected state, and the normal state, and hit save. See how much easier this is than having to write six different advanced actions. Now I simply just need to select the appropriate objects and variables and states, and then hit save. So very quick to build this out. And the advantage is, is that, um, you know, it's completely a reusable format too. So this is now button four, button four, selected, normal, save, execute shared actions, Now we're on to button five, so I have to scroll down a little bit here. And last but not least, execute shared action. And this is button six. Six, selected, normal, save. So I could just keep going with building this, but I like to pause at this moment, maybe press the save button in the toolbar, and let's do a preview in HTML5. Obviously this is far from complete, but I like to test it as we go to make sure that, uh, you know, that we can see everything that's happening here. So uh, does this work? So I can select them all and I can unselect the ones that I don't think, and I can just keep clicking this forever. I don't know about you guys, but I hate the sound of the Captivate button click. So here's a little pro tip. You can select all of these buttons at the same time and disable the click sound. Um, I'm less concerned about this these days, but maybe selecting the hand cursor changes the mouse cursor to something that looks like, hey, you can press here. Uh, for learners that might not, you know, instantly recognize that. And that might be extra important, uh, you know, when you're um, dealing with, um, you know, HTML5 and stuff like that. So that part works. Now, so we've got our selection part of this um, project done. Next, we need to write the advanced action for submit. Now, actually, now that I think about it, there is something that I think we failed to include in our button selection. So here is a case where I would suggest uh, making a new shared action. Let's do that. Let's go through the scenario. Uh, if this is my second or third attempt, I want to reset this feedback caption down here. And I think the natural place to do it is when you start selecting new choices for a second or possibly third attempt here. So let's go into our advanced action that the shared action is originally based on here. And I'm going to add change state of feedback back to normal. And that's when we click it the first time here. And I'm going to copy it and paste it also down in here as well. And we'll just do it like that. So now let's save this as a shared action. And we're going to have to give this a new name. We're going to call this uh, button press. I don't know. We'll call this new button press. So we do still want to keep track of the variable. Variable associated with button, button being pressed, selected 
state of button feedback caption normal state of feedback caption and of course uh, normal state of button being pressed. And maybe I'll just make this consistent here. Button being pressed. One of the things I'd like to give Adobe feedback on is, you know, sometimes the order of this is a little wonky as it is in this case here. It would be nice to have up and down arrows here where I could choose the order that you know, allows me to decide what, uh, you know, what I'm doing here. So let's save this. And that means we're going to have to update our original advanced action so we can keep track of what that shared action does. And I'm just going to update this real quick here to new button press. And so our variable is button one, the button being pressed is button one, selected, Feedback caption is there. Normal. Yeah, see, that that's a little confusing when it's like that, but that's okay. It'll still work fine. Selected shows up here and normal is down there. So let's quickly make that change. New button press. This is now for button two selected the feedback caption is down below normal normal save so it doesn't take too much extra time here but you know i'm just preemptively dealing with something that would show up later when we're writing our advanced action for the submit button here so let's just do this selected state feedback, normal, normal, save. And this is now item four, button four rather, and the selected state for that, the feedback caption down here, normal, normal, I love shared actions, but it can be a little tricky when you're applying them, uh, especially if you're doing it repetitively across a whole slew of buttons. I find any repeated or repetitive tasks like this can sometimes become a little mind numbing and you can end up being a little confused. Oh, what was I doing again? Especially when you're talking to a live stream or what should have been a live stream. Uh, normal state for that and normal state there yeah and one more to go so let's do new button press and this is button six so we select the variable in the button itself and the selected state for that button the feedback caption for that slide the normal state for the feedback caption and the normal state for your button. Press save. So that's good. Let's just double check. Uh, I'm going to hit save first and then just double check to make sure that this displays as it should. So they're all selectable. And submit doesn't do anything yet. Okay. And by the way, you know, if you're doing this type of question, it would be so easy to skip it. So what I'm going to do is go into my skin editor, which is shown up on my other monitor for some reason. We're going to uncheck show playback controls and uh, I'm going to uncheck, uncheck, <laughs> uncheck show borders so that we're just seeing, uh, you know, a straight up plain background here and no weird borders or controls that are going to get in the way of this project from functioning. So now we need to write our submit button. So this is a, an exercise in thinking carefully about what you want to have happen and when. 
So let's, we've got our variables in place. Let's just do a refresher here. We've got a variable for attempt and we have a variable for one through six, which will contain either a zero or one, depending on whether it's selected. One is selected, zero is not selected. So that's what we have to work with, with our advanced action. So let's go into advanced action and we'll call this submit. There's no value in making this a shared action because uh, you're really going to use this only once per slide. And later I'll show you a tip on how you can replicate all this work, uh, you know, multiple times in a single project. So the first thing I think what we want to do here is we want to have the first decision tab deal with the keeping track of the number of tries here. So we're going to um, call this tab attempt. And we are simply going to increment our attempt variable by a value of one. Now, I, when I created the attempt variable, I gave it no value here. You could put in zero and update that. That would be fine. So when I press it, when I press submit, the, the va variable will be equal to one. And then if I've done it before, it'll be equal to two and so on. So that's going to be useful for us. Now let's think in the order of these decision tabs are important. So let's do this first one here. And we're going to say if, and I'm just moving this aside. So again, the only correct answers are two, three, four, and five. Answer one and two should remain zero. So we're going to do correct first. So if we're correct, this is what we're going to do. So we're going to say if the variable button one is equal to the literal value of zero. And right, all, this has to be all conditions are true. Uh, the variable button two is equal to the literal value of one. And you could cheat a little bit and just paste this in and change that to button three save you a few steps anyway. Button four. And I'm out of lines. So what you want to do here is click this little add icon to add another one. And I can paste on there too and make that to be button five. And once more, We'll do, I'll paste over top of this one again. And we'll make that button six. But we have to remember to change that back to the literal value of zero. Now, if they've got this correct, you're done. So I think a couple of things we're going to do. We're going to first of all show, I've got two next buttons. So we can proceed to the next slide if you've got it correct. Uh, but we're only going to show the reason there's two of them there. One of them is when the either the answer your tries have been exhausted or uh, and the other one is when the the correct answer is selected. So we are going to show the version of this next button. And you'll see I've got two versions of it, the correct next button. We're going to change the state of our feedback caption to correct. And in theory, that's all you need to do. But I like to take it a step further and prevent someone from changing their answers at this point. So I'm going to disable button one. And again, we can copy and paste this for all of those. That would be button two, three, four, five, and six. And we just need to change that to two, three, four, five, 
and six. And you know what? Let's disable the submit button too. Let's make sure someone can't press that again. So we'll disable the submit button because they're done. There's nothing else for them to do. Okay. I can, uh, we'll call this correct. So we can keep track of that. I'm going to duplicate this decision tab here just to save myself, um, you know, just uh, some extra work here. Uh, so in this case here, let's do incomplete. Okay. So You know, now I'm thinking about this, maybe, maybe I count this as a try. So if nothing is selected, oops, oops, I screwed that up. I'm going to have to copy and paste this over top here and make that number five. Okay, so if nothing is selected, but you've gone ahead and hit submit, uh, all of these will be equal to zero. So we're not going to show the next button. We're going to change the state of the feedback to incomplete. And we're not going to disable anything, right? So let's delete those. So we're just going to change the feedback to incomplete. Um, so let me just kind of just recap here. So I'm incrementing my attempt by value of one. If it's correct, all of this will happen. If it's incomplete, all of this will happen. Let's duplicate correct again. And we will call this Um, we'll call this try again, I think, because there's going to be two situations where you're in incorrect and one will allow you to try again and one will not. So this will be try again. Um, so we're going to say if we're going to do a custom. Actually, no. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to do this a little differently. Let's get rid of this tab altogether. We've got correct. And then we're going to have um, the else take care of the try again message. Okay. So if it's anything other than correct, we're going to change the state of our feedback caption to incorrect try again. Okay. So that should take care of correct and incorrect. If it's com incomplete, we'll change the state of our feedback to incomplete. And then the last thing we want to do is a final custom tab that says if the variable underscore attempt is equal to, and there's a reason we're saving this for last, the literal value of now, let me think for a second here. We're going to let them do one, two, and three. So if it's equal to four, we're going to we're going to show them the next button. 
that is for incorrect only. We're going to disable button one. And again, I can save some time here and put that in five more times. And then just change that to button two, button three, button four, five, and six. We're going to show our, or sorry, no, change the state of our feedback caption to out of tries. And we should probably disable the submit button too. Disable submit. So what you're seeing here, like I know it seems kind of on the fly or off the cuff. That's how I write advanced actions. I know in some of my public facing videos, uh, you know, you'll see me just like whip it off, like without any thought. This is how I really do it. I'm literally working through the possibilities and the processes here. So let's, uh, let's change the title of this to out of tries. So I think that's right. Now it's time, I think, to test this. We'll save this as an action. Click OK and click close. Now I think here, a couple of things to think about. Um, I think with these, I'm going to retain the state on slide revisit. So if you come back to the slide, you'll see what you selected before. I'm also going to do the same thing for this multi-state object as well. Okay. And I'm going to keep these normally what I would do with the, the, the incorrect next and the correct next is I would stack them on top of one another. So as far as the learner is concerned, they won't necessarily know which one of those two next buttons they'll see. They won't even be aware there are two next buttons. But for our purposes today, I'm going to keep them side by side. We'll make sure the submit button is pointing at the advanced action for submit. And again, I'm going to do this here. Now let's see if my logic works in actual practice here. Then we'll know for sure. Okay, so here's our slide. Let's not choose anything. Ah, you must make a selection before pressing submit. I did use up my try, one of my tries there. Let's get it clearly wrong. Okay. That's incorrect. You may try again. Notice that when I click these, the message goes away. So when I start making new selections, let's run out of tries and see what happens here. That's incorrect. I may try again. That's incorrect. I'm sorry. You're out of tries. I can't make new choices. I can't press submit again. I do get a next button, but I'm not going to get any points for that. Let's refresh this and let's try this once more. Let's get it wrong. Let's unselect and select only the correct answer. So that's the correct answer. That's correct. You may press the next button to proceed with the course. And there's my correct next button. And by the way, if you're wondering why did I have two next buttons? Simple. This one here, I'm not including it in the quiz, but this one here, I am. And I'm going to assign 10 points and I'm going to report answers. And, you know, you can customize your interaction ID here. Custom question slide 01, for example. And there we go. So now what's going to happen? Let's uh, let's add a quiz results slide. The easiest way to do that is just to add any old question slide while we're here at the slide. I'll just delete this because I don't need that. 
Uh, the only thing is, is that you're going to need to come up with something for while you're in review mode, which we'll, we'll look at that. Um, or maybe you don't. Maybe it doesn't need that. Let's preview and in HTML5 in browser. The preview might work in this case, just based on the choices that I've made here. All right, so let's try. Okay, you must make a selection first. Let's get it wrong. That's incorrect. I may try again. Here is the right answer. That's correct. And you can see I got 10 points and so on. You can review the quiz. There's, yeah, I got that right. So I can still go back and look at those question slides. You could add like, you know, other navigation controls for while you're in review mode. Um, what you would need is an on, on enter advanced action for this slide to look at actually the system variable that keeps track of whether you're in review mode or not. And it's CP quiz, where is it here? Oh, it's in here somewhere. It's got the word review in it. If I can only find it, and what is it called? Maybe it's not quiz info, maybe, because actually it's not, it's kind of, I'm not seeing it. Here's a, here's a way you can help you find system variables when you just can't remember the name of them. You can open up a help page, which right now I'm disconnected from the internet for some reason, which is very weird. But um, yeah, uh, it's there in review mode. Let's find it for you. I just want to make sure you've got that. Oh yeah, here it is. Uh, here it is here. CP in review mode. So it's going to have a value of one if you're reviewing your quiz. So you could say if CP in review mode equals one, then show your custom message or show your special back and next buttons, which makes it easier for you to go back and next and so on. But that's it in a nutshell. This is pretty much everything that you would need to build a custom multiple correct answers. And of course, with only three tries. So um, again, I thought I would do this session today as a live, uh, live screen, live stream. Is that the word I'm looking for? But I don't know, the internet is like touch and go here today for some reason. So I'm just going to record it and I'm going to upload it to the channel and just for all you members of my YouTube channel. So you'll get to enjoy it. Um, so there you go. Hope you enjoy this uh, tutorial and I hope you uh, can, can benefit from this as well. Here's what I'm going to suggest though. This was probably a little more complicated than the other possibility when there is only one answer. But using the knowledge that you've learned here today, I'm going to give you guys some homework. See if you can build the same exact project, but with only one correct answer instead of multiple correct answers. So it's going to require a little bit different logic. The selection of the buttons will be the same. However, You'll want to change it so that if I select Backdoor Alberta, it will unselect anything else that's done. So you, you will need to change a little bit of your logic here. So that, that's a good challenge for you to take away. And, uh, you know, let me know how it goes. We'll talk to you guys real soon. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com. And don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.